Welcome to the Get Over Yourself podcast. This is Brad Kearns. To be your best version of you, you need to be healthy. And to help other people, you need to be healthy. You think better, you make better decisions. You know, life is better with health. Most people who are doing these endurance sports um, do them because they love them. So why would you risk that fun um, to get in an extra workout? Here's a quick thank you to our sponsors. They make this show possible and the tremendous production behind it online and in audio. Thank you, wildideabuffalo.com. Grass-fed, locally raised, on the Great Plains for the last 130,000 years. Quit eating that junk food feedlot cattle and get some quality meat into your life. And thank you, DNAfit.com, cutting-edge genetic testing, delivering customized diet and exercise recommendations for your peak performance. Use the discount code GOY30. Get over yourself. Integro Probiotics make this fabulous liquid probiotic high potency. It's called Flourish, so your microbiome can flourish. Gut health is everything. Get started. Visit EntegroHealth.com and Tribali Foods. Pre-made, creatively flavored hamburger and chicken patties. When you're in a rush, drop one down, fry it up. It's delicious. T-R-I-B-A-L-I and Almost Heaven. That's the name of my sauna. These are beautiful home-use saunas made of real wood, shipped to your door, easy to assemble, and then you are rocking. That's right, I'm going from chest freezer cold therapy into the hot barrel sauna. Check them out at almostheaven.com. And the Primal Blueprint Online Multimedia Educational Courses to go primal, go keto, get a stand-up desk going, master the challenge of endurance training, go to bradkearns.com and click on the links to learn more about these courses. If you're sick of my voice on the podcast, you can now get sick of my face too on the videos. And now on to our show. Andrew McNaughton, we're, we're talking with the, the record button off and part of my mission for this show is to talk about the stuff that we talk about after we hit stop. Okay. And so we're going right into it, man. Cool. Well, we do a lot of shows for the Primal Endurance Podcast. We're directing our comments toward endurance athletes. And some of this stuff is so relevant for anyone, even people that don't care about uh, exercise, fitness, health. So that's why I wanted to pick it up and talk yeah. about this concept of um, one of the things we talk about on the show is like putting your, your, own putting health, your health first. first. Yeah. 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 To mean to, to, to be your best version of you, you need to be healthy. And to help other people, you need to be healthy. If you're healthy and happy, it's much easier, you're much more tolerant, you're much more agreeable, you're much, you think better, you make better decisions, you know, life is better with health, right? So uh, there are times where it's, you know, you are number one and you need to put yourself first, at least for a portion of the time so that you can make sure that you're good to go and, and do whatever it is that you need to do, right? Uh, we were just talking a second ago about um, the difference of, between um, us having colds as athletes and us having colds after our, we were being athletes or uh, of someone who is a professional, uh, not athlete, but a, has a professional career. Um, how, a teacher, how they do, a busy yeah. mom, yeah. whoever it is, whoever like it when is. you have to rally. Yeah. And our, our mission was like, we didn't want to put anything in our bodies. Well, we couldn't. That, yeah, because and also there couldn't. Was random, yeah. There was random drug testing and... Uh, at least for me, I was so ignorant on the subject, I was just afraid to take anything. And I was like, it's just easier not to take anything because then you knew, right? It's like, there's no way that anything can go wrong if I don't take anything except eat food. That's pretty much all <laughs> I did, you know? Um, so, um, yeah, we were just talking about that. And it's like when, when we were athletes, we just had sort of had to deal with it and let the symptoms run their course, right? And your father always sort of made fun with us. He goes, oh, I always takes." 10 to 14 days for your cold and you can't really hurry it up. And, you know, we're sort of, we don't want that to be true. So we're sort of pushing it all the time. I think I'll feel you know? better by Saturday to ride that 80 mile ride. Yeah. Nah, I don't think so. And his, his dad's like, yeah, 10 days or two weeks, <laughs> 10 days, two weeks, somewhere in there. Anyway, um, it's something that I still fight now, even though that I know that and I have that experience. It's yeah. still like, well, hopefully it'll be gone in a week, but it rarely is. Um, yeah. but the difference is, is, um, 
uh, now that I'm so accustomed to not taking anything for colds or, or anything, um, I, I, you know, I, I still don't. And, and we were talking earlier about what is the downside. Well, the downside with taking any drugs, and he, actually, let me take a little aside here. So um, interesting experience I've had. So I've got a friend who's a pain medicine doctor. And I have a friend who is a um, functional medical practitioner. And it's a good lesson on understanding who you're asking for information so that you can digest the information. If I'm to ask my pain med doctor how much, let's say, uh, Tylenol I can take, he will give me the amount I can take in 24 hours and not die. Without showing up at the ER. Yeah, without showing up, without killing my liver, right? And if I were to ask my functional medical practitioner, um, she will tell me the amount I can take before it has an adverse effect on my gut health and th therefore my immune system. So they're the same question. The answers are both right, but you have to figure you have to understand who you're asking this question, right? So one is... I don't know what it is, uh, you know, eight or 10 pills in 24 hours and you ruin your liver. And the other one is one or two pills uh, in 24 hours. Otherwise, you you are risking uh, health and weakened immune system. And then now, a six-month detox protocol after that is two Tylenols that you took back in November. Yeah, but, uh, you know, and I, and I could be exaggerating. I really don't know because I, I don't think I've taken Tylenol ever, maybe. Um, but... Uh, uh, it's just, it's just, it's just sort of an interesting aside I had in my head there that I thought I'd share with you. So back to the original uh, tr thread that we were talking about is taking pills for masking the side effects when you're not feeling well. Um, that's fine, but the side effects, if you were to ask an MD, um, are non-existent, right? But if you were to ask a functional medical practitioner, um, there are side effects to taking um, Nyquil or. Uh, whatever else you take, it's Tylenol, cold and sinus, yeah, all the whatever. prescription drugs, all the, statins, oh, uh, sleep aids. Well, that's uh, that's that's yeah. the, that's the next step. Let's go yeah. there in a second. Yeah. Let's but just even start over with, the counter, simple just, routine stuff that we take every day. Yeah, let's take, yeah. start we'll start with the stuff where you don't need doctor supervision, um, and these are just things you can do to yourself without thinking. So, um, yes, you can take these things, and they won't kill you in the recommended dosage, right? But will they interfere with your health? And more often than not, the answer is yes. So here's the thing. I'm not saying don't take them. I'm saying understand what you're doing because taking them uh, and masking the symptoms so that you can function and go to court or, you know, uh, or do uh, daycare or whatever it is that you do for your job um, is probably more important, right? And so because you need to function, you have responsibilities that you need to do every day. But just know what's going into it that taking less is better as opposed to taking more, right? Um, but you, have to, you also have your own particular goals. Anyway, so that's, I just wanted to, to introduce that as a thought. That's depending on who you ask the question, you could get a correct answer that's very different than someone else who will still give you a correct answer, but it'll be very different. So, um, and, and because I have two friends that are on opposite sides of the spectrum, both whom I trust very much. They get along well, by the way, homeboy and homegirl. Yeah. They're, they're friendly and all they're, that. They're very, they just they're, have, yeah. Yeah, they have, they, have, they have very different clientele, <laughs> you know, very different clientele. And Maybe they should switch for like 30 days. Well, the, the guy who is the pain doc actually really loves the functional medical pro, uh, approach. But he can't really do it with the people he works with because primarily people who come to pain doctors are because they've done everything else mm. and they just have chronic pain and there's not much else you can do except deal, you know, except for try to help relieve some of their pain. Or they've done nothing else because they could give a heck <laughs> and so they're just coming to the pain doc to get their pain meds. I, 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 <laughs> I, I guess if you're listening to Hannity then that's what happens, yeah. But uh, it's probably a small portion of the population, and it's just other Fox News hosts that are going there for those drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Brutal. Uh, also, I'd like to add on that note, when you talk about the 
when we were in that athletic realm where we weren't allowed to take stuff anyway because you're getting random tested, besides that, when I was an athlete, I always wanted to have a complete, accurate window of how I was feeling and my state of readiness, recovery, and uh, wellness. And so I was even uh, averse to the idea of taking caffeine because if I woke up in the morning and I was feeling a little tired and groggy and maybe not feeling like performing this session that, that was intended, I wanted to absorb all that information and make decisions accordingly. Whereas I knew that if I could jack myself up on um, you know, a couple cups of coffee, I would override that whatever that fatigue was from the central nervous system or the muscle still recovering from the previous workout. And I thought that to be a bad idea uh, looking at the long-term consequences when you have a championship race coming in eight months. You don't want to be washing down a lot of fatigue with a stimulant that hides the true state of uh, you know, readiness and recovery. So I know that a lot of athletes... Um, didn't operate under those strict parameters, but I thought that was one of my advantages was that I was always highly aware of the same thing uh, in the workplace. If I'm a self-employed person, right, I don't have, I'm not on the clock and, and disallowed from taking a nap, but if I'm tired to the extent that I notice my cognitive function declining in the afternoon when we have those afternoon blues like we're all familiar with, that little dip, and what happens to me is I start drifting over to YouTube videos because I went searching for one thing, found it, and then got attracted to something else and something else, and I actually sit back and notice, okay, I'm losing the edge here, and my best decision now is to go take a 20-minute nap, and I promise you to the highest to the listener of the highest level of peak performance and intensity and competitiveness in your career, whatever you're doing, I guarantee you I more than make up for that 20-minute departure from my screen, from my control tower, by coming back and being more productive and more alert and better functioning for the remaining hours that I'm going to sit and do work. And I think that's something that's it's disgracefully uh, underappreciated and underpracticed today. Ariana Huffington did a great job. We're going to get her on the show pretty soon. But, you know, she's promoting this uh, advocacy, advocacy of sleeping and napping as a priority, even in the workplace. And there was a great line from uh, in her podcast and her book where in her offices when she was running the Huffington Post, she would purposely leave the, the, the window curtains open so people could see her napping in her office so that it was becoming an accepted part of the culprit culture that she could go down for a nap. I'm sure she put a do not disturb on the door, but you walk by the, the boss sleeping in the middle of the day. It has a profound, I'm going to say, positive impact on the culprit culture, but it's so rare that people are probably horrified to even hear the, hear the anecdote. So I would say that that's good for most people or some people. I think that some people are probably better off going for a 10-minute walk than a 10-minute nap um, and just moving a little bit. Um, uh, but I think that some people who don't sleep enough could use the nap. I don't know. It's hard to – it would be one of those things that you should experiment with yourself and see which one works best for you. Or as you get to know yourself better, um, don't always choose nap. Sometimes movement is better and sometimes you're just sick of looking at what you're doing. You know, I know that I know for me when I'm doing something that I'm truly engaged with, I don't get hungry or tired ever. And I can go from eight in the morning till midnight and I have never once thought about food or water or never been distracted if it's something that I'm truly engaged with. And when I was doing video editing, it happened all the time, mm. absolutely all the time. I would get up in the morning and I would say, well, maybe I'll do something before I eat breakfast and, uh, and then let it render while I eat breakfast for an hour or whatever. And next thing I know it would be midnight and I'd work the whole day without even noticing, you know, and, uh, uh, some people think that that's crazy to me. That means I'm doing something that I love and, uh, and time just goes by, you know, and I, I kind of, I kind of miss that right now actually, uh, because I find that, um, I do need to get up and walk around a little bit. I have a stand up, sit down desk, so I find that I push the button a lot so I can change my <laughs> sit down or stand up. Fantastic. And, yeah. and if I sit down for too long, I find that my posture completely deteriorates. And as soon as I consciously notice that I'm slouch boy, then I push the button and stand up again. <laughs> but when I'm just sitting down for the first time, I'm, I, I, I sit all, you know, uh, with good posture and stuff. So it's sort of funny how uh, it works. Uh, so back to this thread where we're talking about putting health as number one priority. 
And then we did some uh, little offshoots of that, talking about the use of medications, my advocacy to want to notice everything, such as a headache. If I have a headache, really uh, anyone with a, a splitting headache, probably the best thing to do is go down and lie down in a dark room, right? Not continue to work or continue to uh, uh, do something that you're not going to be high functioning at because of the pain. Water and, and nap. Yeah. Right. Uh, and failing that, people will, will take the uh, dose with the uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory to get that relief, and then they can carry on and do their presentation at 3 p.m. or make the, the board meeting at 4 p.m., which is, I would say, of uh, a temporary stopgap, it's fine, but it's also nice to reflect, like, why did I pull that headache in the middle of an important work day? Uh, was it insufficient sleep, bad meal habits, bad snacking habits, things like that, where you can kind of correct course? And again, be putting health as number one, knowing that nothing's going to be perfect, but trying to kind of change that mindset away from just the, uh, you know, the slogging mindset where you're just there to, to get through the day and get through life with your health somewhere floating around third, fourth, seventh, or ninth ranked in your priority list. Yeah. So throw the word perfect out and throw the word fair out because those are useless words and they only cause problems. Problems. Um, and just go for better, you know, um, do the best you can on this day, do better today than yesterday or this week than last week or this month than last month. And that's all that matters, you know, is you want to go forward, uh, and, and do better, you know, and, uh, sometimes it's not better than last month. It's just the best you can do under the circumstances. And that's fine. Um, there's something about frame of mind that comes in when you know you're doing the best you can. Um, and it's, uh, it, 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 if nothing else, it, it, you feel like you're in control of what you can be in control of in the situation. And sometimes a little of that is good. Also giving up to the things that you don't control is also good. Right. So knowing that critical distinction, like being able to determine what you can control and what you can't, and then focusing on what you can control you're, you're describing that you get that sense of, uh, satisfaction. Um, yeah, you just, you want to, you want to feel like you're doing your best. So you don't feel a overwhelmed or annoyed or angry, um, and be content with that. You know, it's like, well, this is the best I can do. And, and, you know, uh, when I have the ability, I'll do better, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's the top of uh, John Wooden's pyramid of success is the self-satisfaction of knowing that you gave your best, something like that. I think that's pretty close. But it had nothing to do with winning, uh, measuring the result, all the nonsense that we hear that uh, we're trying to counter, especially with this show, to keep it real and realize that, hey, maybe you, uh, you've been in Hollywood for 10 years trying to make it as an actor and get your break and you haven't. Um, but that doesn't mean you're a failure compared to uh, the, the guy who just starred in the movie and then uh, crashed his car and knocked off some people on the sidewalk. It's just, um, you know, we're, we're, we need to recalibrate and, and define success differently, uh, just like that pyramid definition of knowing, hey, I gave it my all. And that in and of itself is, is all that we ever really need. Yeah, I think that quantifying it differently, um, you know, uh, I have conversations with people who have lots and lots and lots of money and they tend to quantify things monetarily. And, uh, um, I think there's lots of people who are happy and they quantify things differently. Um, wish we could blend the, let's introduce them. Let's have a party and, and the happy rich party. Yeah, <laughs> mingle, and, go ahead and mingle. That's right. I know we're going to play people, charades pretty soon with random assignments, people, but yeah. I know very few happy rich people. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Um, so taking it back to health and you, you, um, talked about how important mindset is to health. That's well, a great connection here because, oh my gosh, you want to go listen to shows. We've done, you know, so many shows on the healthy eating protocol and the way to exercise. So you don't get overly stressed and there's plenty of information about how to be healthy. Um, a lot of us are falling short with those basics. And so until those basics are covered, I think it's not even worth worrying about these higher levels of sophistication. But if you are making that good effort to be healthy and fit and do your yoga or put in your miles or your routine visits to the sauna because you heard how healthy that is, those heat shock proteins, the cold therapy that I'm doing every morning in the name of health. Uh, but now when we bring that mindset component in, 
that's when we really start to clarify uh, this, this picture of healthy mind and healthy body and how they go together so well. Yeah, so there's uh, in Taos in New Mexico, there's the Mind Body Institute. Um, and it's, it's how, uh, how intertwined everything is. Um, it's really hard to have a healthy body without a healthy mind, although it's possible. It's really hard to have a healthy mind without a healthy body, although it's possible. It's, it's, it, it, they, are, they are truly intertwined, and it's, it's better to work on both of them. Uh, and peace of mind, with me certainly, comes with a healthy body much, much easier than when I'm not. I find that when I'm, when I'm getting agitated and when I'm less easy to get along with, it's mostly because physically there's something going on. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. And it could be a symptom wow. of sleep. But wow. it's, but it's, so there's something physical. Yeah. Um, but, or, or what, do we, what would you call it? Not just physical, like your left hamstring is bugging you, but um, practically speaking, your routine is messed up. You're traveling back and forth excessively to the Bay Area by obligation, but that doesn't make for uh, someone who likes his perfect routine here uh, in beautiful Thousand Oaks Training Center. It's, a, it's an adjustment that's going to elevate your stress level. Um, the, the relationship therapists talk a lot about how if life is too stressful in general, you're not going to be able to exercise these fabulous uh, partnership techniques because you're too tired to lift that finger and go do the dishes when you know you should or it would be a wonderful gesture of support. Uh, but if it's not there because your, your body is physically overrun with insulin and inflammation, that's, uh, that's a great starting point. Now we know what we're going to do. But then if we're, uh, if we're, again, if we're nailing some of those objectives of physical health, then we have to transition to being like, how, how can I be maybe uh, less self-absorbed, less obsessive compulsive about my health and fitness goals, and thereby of better service to others and maybe even more at peace every night when I lay my wonderful six-pack to sleep on my bed, but I'm full of negative emotions, negative energy, and enemies in my Rolodex. I, I, I'm dry. <laughs> that's about that's about says it all right there uh, but really if we can get into um that topic because we associate with so many uh who called the type triple a i think it was ben greenfield you know the type a mm-hmm. athlete He's, he says I, I deal with type double a's and type triple a's and i'm thinking mm-hmm. of the battery analogy which is so funny because people treat themselves almost like they're robots where they just wind up mm-hmm. and go every day into this extreme high stress high stimulation lifestyle where they're pushing their body so hard and then you're going to start bringing some negative energy into this one otherwise wonderful commitment to uh, peak performance health productivity fitness all that stuff and that's that's the world we operate in largely is this type double a and type triple a so maybe we can speak to that a little bit so yeah the the if you're talking about an exercise routine um uh then uh, you know, you need to, if you don't have time to do Tuesdays workouts, Tuesdays, you don't add them to Wednesdays, Tuesdays is gone, you move on. Um, what I found works for me and my athletes, and I've spoken about this before on the endurance podcast, is that I don't give people things to do on specific days. I give them workouts in order. Um, and this is just the next one up, whatever day you have time. And, um, if you have more than one day between, that workout and the next workout, then, you know, do the A workout, not the B workout sort of thing. And, um, and I find that that works because people then aren't trying to do makeup and they don't do too much. And, um, I read Greg Lamont's book back in the eighties and he used to say that he did pretty much the same thing, um, all the time. And then when he would go to, when he would try to peak for a race, he would do two weeks of work in seven to 10 days and then he would rest and then he would go race. And so basically he was just doing twice as much, right. And, or or something like that. And, uh, then he would rest and let it absorb. And then he would go and hopefully get blast out of the cannon when the race went on. And so that's what you, that's sort of what you're doing there is you're doing, uh, you're, you're peaking. And if this is just regular training and you're doing your, you're doing your double workouts like that, um, not, not two in a day, double workouts, but I mean, two days of workouts in one day or three days in in two days or whatever. Um, it's as if you're telling your body to get ready for a peak. Um, so you're building up this, this extra stress and then you, 
your body's going to wait for the rest so that it can really go and, or it'll just break down. And, um, uh, if you're not doing the rest afterwards, because you're not doing it as a peak, you're just doing it as regular training and you're trying to make up, then like I said, four seconds ago, you break down and you get sick or you get injured or you, whatever, something happens, right? Something that's undesirable. And most people who are doing these endurance sports, um, do them because they love them. And if they don't, they're too long and tedious to do. So I can't imagine why you would be doing it if it wasn't out of love. Uh, and so why would you risk that fun um, to get in an extra workout mm. when, when you're taking the chance of getting injured or sick? Um, or bored. Or, you know, or, or fried. Or fried or whatever um, when you could you know, continue to do this. And as we know with endurance sports, it's consistency over a long time that makes you better. It's never one workout. You know, one workout can ruin you, but it can't make you. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's just, you keep those things in mind. And I understand that it's hard for the, for the go-getters and the people who, you know, like to write things down and accomplish their goals. Um, but you have to realize that when you write down workouts to do, those aren't necessarily your goals. Those are the steps that you believe that will lead you to your goal. But if time doesn't permit on one day, then it doesn't mean that that step is necessary to reach your goal. It quite often means that including that step now will actually interfere with reaching your ultimate goal, which is doing better at your next race or, or the next one or whatever it is, right? So um, uh, that's, something, that's something to keep in mind with, with busy bodies and, and travel for work or, or uh, sick children who are keeping you up so you can't sleep or whatever, whatever it might be. Um, understand that. Go with the flow, adjust. Yeah, because today, like the the athlete analogy is very simple. They want to do their workout on Tuesday. They want to do their workout on Wednesday. And now, like in my life, I'm looking at my to-do list, and it's highly scattered to um, helping out aging parent, connecting with teenager in a meaningful way or outing or event, uh, you know, doing my uh, contribution to uh, the community, giving the talk at the library, whatever it is, and then all these business objectives that are piling up and, and never-ending. And we have a real difficult time in general, uh, hard driving the type AA, type AAA, difficult time saying no, sometimes difficult time prioritizing, uh, sometimes difficult time putting, putting health first again to the extent that we uh, tail spin into a spiral of uh, fatigue, exhaustion, and you know, diminish peak performance because we're trying so hard to peak perform. So that's kind of the the riddle I'm trying to solve here is why is it so difficult uh, for the for the highly motivated person to kind of have that uh, casual attitude, that manana attitude, like they do in other countries, where you know it may or may not get done today, so um, don't worry about it. And a lot of cultures live like that as a, as a routine. No one even thinks twice about it. They go go and take a nap, and the stores are closed in Spain for for three hours every day, right? And, and and don't get discouraged if you don't notice this in yourself, because uh, I certainly don't uh, notice it in myself. But it's really easy for me to notice it in the people I work for, or you know, work with, or whatever. However you want to say that. Um, uh, so yeah, it's not always easy to notice in yourself. <laughs> don't, uh, that was a hard one. Don't get discouraged if you don't notice it in yourself. In other words. Um, be discouraged if you notice no, it. <laughs> in other words, take a look in the mirror, man, and ask those hard questions because yeah. you probably aren't going to notice these things in yourself. Yeah. You're just going to think you're way more busy than the other person in the airplane aisle that's taking up seven seconds of your time. And I, I know we get into that situation where you know the self-importance grows and grows, especially as we do get more responsibility in life to the extent that we lose our perspective. Well, so, sometimes with, with me, if I'm not around the person I'm working with regularly – um, I get permission to talk to the significant other uh, and see how they're doing. And sometimes we get on a, a conference call and that other person is part of the conversation so I can get feedback that's not from the person I'm actually working with, someone who is there all the time. And it's good feedback. And what it helps is it helps the person that I'm working with recognize these things. And eventually uh, they need me less and less. Right. Because they start being able to notice these things. Now, of course, 
um, I'm aware of this stuff and I've been aware of it for a long time and I still don't notice it myself sometimes, you know. I get caught up in a routine because, to be perfectly frank, I'm one of those people who loves routines and I love writing stuff down and just doing it. And um, so, uh, you know, I get caught up and I and every so often I find myself saying to myself, oh, I've got to do this today. And as soon as I hear myself say I have to, then I stop because the answer is no, I don't ever have to. You know, it has to be I want to. Right when you're getting heavily processed and get into this this uh, this track, you don't have to go to work. Yes, I do. No, you don't. I don't think there's a gun to your head. And we can wind the person down to the, when those real insights come forth. When you realize you're not in such a you're not in the, as as big a hole as you think. And there's all kinds of options uh, on a small scale, and even those um, those big choices that you're forced to make sometimes in the interest of being happy and uh, you know making the most of your time here. Yeah, there's, you know, um, people who are, are sick, I guess is the word to say, or, or are dealing with complex um, autoimmune problems, they have to change their life because their life is making them sick. I know. Isn't that sad that like the, the, the catalyst, especially a lot of people in the ancestral health yeah. scene uh, are coming here from, you know, disaster motivated by absolute tragic consequences rather than just yeah, you know, mm-hmm. I quit my job because it wasn't as fulfilling anymore. Not because I had stage four cancer that I have to go into intensive yeah. treatment for. So, like, if you're listening to the show and we want to get to that point where we can um, have those insights come out and those big decisions made before you're motivated by the by the you know the real problems, the that would be super doom. nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, impending doom. Yeah, impending doom is a good motivator, but it would be nice if if we could find the motivation uh, before that. Because we're all impending doom after all. Well, yeah, exactly. We're yeah. all one day closer to death, right? So, yeah. Uh, that was some fun right there, Andrew. We got, we got into it a little bit. Hope right. you like the, the flavor of the show. It's, it's off the rails, and I appreciate you listening. This is Brad Kearns for Andrew McNaughton in our Southern Cal McNaughton studios. Thank you for listening. Let's talk about probiotics from Integro Health. Do you want me to sing the messages? Nah. But probiotics are an extremely important concept. Hopefully you're all in on the values, the benefits of nourishing a healthy gut microbiome so you can flourish in life. And that's the name of Integro's product, Flourish a unique, extremely potent living liquid probiotic. Yes, it's liquid form. How is it different from other probiotics we usually see in pills? This is the message from Integro. Microbes continue to thrive and metabolize in their own milieu. Do you like when companies use the word milieu to describe their product? I do. These include short-chain fatty acids, bioactive peptides, amino acids, enzymes, and minerals. The liquid base makes it acid-stable, so microbes can survive the stomach environment and transit to the lower GI tract for integration to give you a healthy gut microbiome. There's 11 different strains in this thing, carefully hand-cultivated in the laboratory with precision to deliver 8 billion total CFU. Why take probiotics? Come on, you have to ask. It's going to strengthen your immune function, reduce systemic inflammation, the root cause of all disease, improve digestion, promote bowel regularity, relieve gas and bloating, get you going again after illness or antibiotic use. That's me because I first got this shipment the very day I returned home from a Mexican vacation and had a stomach illness once again. What a bummer. So sad because I love going down south, but I needed to repair and return to action quickly. So I started guzzling this stuff and had a wonderful return to health. I'm a very enthusiastic user and will be over the long run because I need all the help I can get. I don't know about you when we're talking about our routine usage of antibiotics, the stress we put on our system and in the environment every single day. I especially notice my gut health is compromised when I engage in overly intensive athletic training, have trouble recovering. My gut is the first thing to go. So this is my go-to product, the Flourish Probiotic in liquid form. Try it yourself. I love the delicious root beer float flavor. 
just kidding, man. This stuff is no funny business. This is the real deal. It's very potent. It tastes fine. It goes down okay, but no Reaper float flavor. Sorry. Take it. You'll love it. Go look at IntegroHealth.com for more information and to order shipped directly to your door in its unique liquid form. Flourish! Hey, have you heard of genetic testing by now? You probably have. Yes, for the first time in history, we are able at a simple and affordable transaction to basically spit into a plastic tube, mail it off, and find out what your genes are all about. I love working with DNAfit.com because it's so simple. You get a wonderful infographic report, which is easy to understand. You don't have to wade through a lot of science. Yes, you're going to get a detailed printout of many, many pages talking about the interactions of the various genes that are present and expressed in your body or not and how that affects your health. But the one-page infographic, that's when we're really talking because you can get actionable tips and insights that you have an elevated need for vitamin D, that you have a low tolerance for alcohol or a high tolerance for caffeine or lactose or omega-3s or antioxidants, the most important and life-changing insight that I received from my DNA fit test was that my genetics reveal a muscular makeup that's 54% power and strength and only 46% endurance. In other words, I was banging my head against the wall as an endurance athlete for years and years, training in a manner that was not optimally aligned with my genetic predispositions. Don't waste 20 years like I did not knowing what your genetics are all about when it comes to your dietary habits and exercise protocol. Check out dnafit.com. You'll learn a lot about genetic testing when you visit their website. Take the test, get your infographic, and you'll go from there. And because DNA Fit loves the Get Over Yourself podcast, they have created a special super duper 30% discount off of all their products just by entering the code GOY30 when you're checking out. And if you have already ordered, the fun, exciting Ancestry.com package, a great gift idea where you can get your family involved and everyone sends in their spit sample and you can get your ancestry. I'm 46% Ireland and 44% uh, England, Western Europe. I'm a pure breed. I don't know if that's good or bad. With dogs, it's bad. Probably with humans, not great either. But I am what I am, said Popeye and I, and my sister and my brother and my mom and dad all have our fun reports to look and see all this cool stuff at Ancestry.com, so check them out. But if you did an Ancestry.com report, or if you've done a 23andMe genetic report, the new technology allows DNA Fit to pull from the same central database and produce their fitness, health, diet, exercise genetic infographic for much less cost because you've already gone through the DNA sequencing from the other sources. So check that out on dnafit.com and leverage what you may have already done or get started with DNA Fit and get your diet and exercise right with that awesome 30% discount, G-O-Y-30.